Thank you for asking me to give our talk about this randomized control trial. And I would like to point out that there are some new results that are not in the abstract. I have no affiliations. Many people have shown that people, that women with refractory detrusor of activity are likely to have some form of bacteria in about half the cases. There are a couple of observational studies showing benefit for antibiotic treatment, uh, which don't give a lot of detail, and there's no RCT. So in our study, we recruited quite strictly. Uh, this is our standard definition of refractory. All the m women were postmenopausal on topical estrogen. And very importantly, we had a clinical override for ethics purposes that if they had a grossly symptomatic UTI, they were treated no matter what. So this was a two to one ratio. All the patients had darafenacin for the whole six months, but they had antibiotics for, or placebo for six weeks. It was externally randomized. We wanted 120 patients. We gave them antibiotics according to the previous observational studies. And the primary outcome was the 24-hour pad test. The secondary outcome was leaks on the bladder chart. We also had the study uh, outcomes that others have used, such as the PPIUS and the ICIQ. And we, the Data Safety Management Committee uh, asked for an interim analysis at n equals 33. So we recruited over four years. We did uh, encounter plenty of women, so my sample size was not outrageous. Um, we could only enroll 48, and we could only get 33 completions, uh, leading us to the interim analysis. The huge problem was the introduction of Botox, as um, generally available in Australia, and most of our recruitment centers had trouble because of that. So um, now the purple people had placebo, so these purple people didn't change much, and the numbers, uh, the median and the 95% confidence intervals are here, 144, 117, 109. The red people had antibiotics, and you can see that they shifted uh, to a less leakage on their pad test, which was 95% um, confidence intervals are quite reasonable. Uh, again, the purple people um, didn't do much on leaks per day on the chart, um, and the red people had a substantial reduction in leakage per day down from you know, five, four to about one and a half. The PPIUS was disappointing. Now the astonishing finding from this study was that in the first six weeks, the clinical override occurred in 4% of patients on antibiotics and a third of the patients on the placebo had to be given uh, antibiotics. And then in the last part of the study, the, so the total six months, that clinical override increased to 14% of those on antibiotics and 50% of those on the placebo. So they had to be given antibiotics for ethical reasons. And further details of the microbiology will be given by Dr. Mansfield, Professor Mansfield tomorrow. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, our interim analysis does show clinical evidence of a treatment effect. Um, and the stop, trial was stopped because of um, an enormous um, rate of symptomatic UTI that could not be ignored. Thank you. Any question from the floor? Yep. Eva Versi. Hi, Kate. Nice, Hi. To, nice presentation. Um, did you exclude what would be diagnosed as recurrent UTI patients before? Because with the high placebo UTI rate, it may be yeah. they were just getting infected. We did not. We, we took all the patients who had refractory DO. Now, our previous work has shown that about 40% of them will have either classical bacterial cystitis or low-count bacteriuria at some stage in their life. But we were astonished at this finding. And we, we like, two-thirds or more than, almost more than half shouldn't have had any UTIs at all. And we were just looking at the, whether they could have had low-count bacteriuria and that, therefore, the, the bacteria um, would have an effect on their urgency. Um, and, but we were surprised by these results. So, we, yeah. I mean, it's, it's excellent work and really important. So, presumably, those who are responsive to the anti or whatever, they were the ones that were not subject to a bacterial problem. Well, everyone got darafenacin. So right. the only the placebo was versus refractory. The antibiotics. Well, there had to be refractory to at least two anticholinergics to get into the study. Right. Most of them were refractory of five or six agents. 
So does that suggest that those are the ones who were perhaps had an infective yes. uh, oh, indeed. theology? Yes. Oh, indeed. We believe that there is a subset of refractory DO that is um, inflammatory in, in etiology. Right. So the problem then is using 10 to the power of 5? Yes. And what would you do moving forward? Well, so we um, now have... Um, we look in the study that I've reported, we're using classical UTI, but we do have data on any bacteriuria, which goes down to 10 to the 5 per litre or 10 to the uh, 2 per mil, and we will be publishing that. It's, it's an enormous um, problem in this group. Really excellent. Yep. Okay, thank you very much. We are a little behind schedule, so we are moving to the next presentation. Uh, continuous.